Derita, derita, derita. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, okay. Hop, 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 hop. No le mueva. Hey guys, what's up? This is Stephanie and welcome back to my channel. So in the video today, I'm going to be discussing my ENT elective rotation. So hopefully this video is helpful for you guys, for those of you who are currently in your clinical year and are undecisive on what to do your elective rotation in. For those of you who are in your didactic year and are about to start your clinical year and you need to choose an elective, hopefully this video is helpful for you guys. So uh, just real quick, real uh, recap. Um, we were out of rotations last year when I completed my ENT rotation because of COVID-19, which is the same for a lot of I know medical schools and other PA programs. Uh, the other PA classmates that I talked to that are from different programs from mine were also struggling with finding rotations, finding sense that would accept them because of COVID-19, of course. And the individuals like doctors and hospitals, uh, providers, PAs, they just want to make sure that they're taking care of us, even our program not exposing us to COVID-19 so that's why it was really difficult for us to get rotations and we were out of rotations for several months I was very very grateful when I went back to rotations um, of course like I said our program was protecting us from not getting COVID I still got COVID-19 thankfully I didn't get very severe symptoms like other individuals do so I'm very grateful that my symptoms were not as severe and I didn't have to end up being hospitalized but that was one of the reasons why our program was very very um, careful with us. They wanted to make sure that they weren't exposing us to COVID-19. So very grateful that I, I came back and finished our rotations. Now, being that we were out of rotation so long, we didn't finish, we didn't do our rotations as long as we as regularly. So usually our rotations are like one month long and we didn't get to do that because of COVID-19. But regardless, I was very, very grateful because my program graduated some time. So. I finished all my rotations now uh, from my previous video, I'm not sure if you guys have seen it. I have not finished my rotations, but now I have finished all of them. So I will be making videos on the ones that I have not made videos on so I can just discuss my experience. But in this video today, I will be discussing my ENT rotation. So like I said, I didn't get the full month. If anything, I got a few weeks doing this rotation, but regardless, I'm very, very grateful. So I did the rotation with uh, an ENT. PA and then also a doctor. I was with the with the PA the majority of the time. It was a PA that graduated from a program. Very very smart individual. He he knows a lot. So it's like goals. Anything about the ear, the sinus. Fantastic provider. And just to give you a little bit of how my day looked. So I went into clinic Monday to Friday. I went in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It was from. I would get there like around 8.15, we would start around 8.30, 8.40 sometimes, and then up until like 6 or 5.30, depending when we saw our last patient. That was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursdays and Fridays, there was surgeries, and that was, those were half days. We were only there till probably like 12 or 1 the latest, depending on when our surgery was completed. So Thursdays and Fridays, it was mostly surgeries. My, my PA did see patients in between surgeries, but usually it was a lot more surgeries than seeing patients and that was another thing that i really liked about this rotation is that there were we i got to scrub into surgeries and the surgeries were completely different than my general surgery rotation so i already had completed my general surgery rotation thankfully so i know how to scrub in which is one of the things i scrubbed i struggled with if you haven't seen my previous videos is scrubbing in because i always did not scrub in correctly i always uh broke sterilization etc So that was one of the things why I didn't like my general surgery because I'm just a very clumsy individual in general. So I was always breaking sterilization. So thankfully that rotation and also my ob rotation taught me how to properly not break sterilization and also how to scrub in and make sure that you're sterile the entire time wherever you're going. So thankfully I was able to scrub in for these surgeries for my ENT and it was a different surgery than the one than my general surgery. My general surgery did a lot of GI surgeries. He did a lot of appendectomies, cholecystectomies, and also he specialized in like breast mastectomies. But these surgeries through my ENT were a lot more interesting because it involved more of like the sinus. We removed a lot of uh, nasal polyps, um, individuals that just couldn't breathe at night or struggled with like sinusitis, chronic sinusitis, because they had these enlarged like nasal polyps or they just had 
like this atrophied uh, mucosa in their sinus or hypertrophied mucosa in their sinus. So it was really interesting to see these, these surgeries during my ENT rotation. And definitely, you know, how far can you go when you're doing these surgeries because you have the, the brain right here. So you wanna make sure that you don't hit that bone. So I thought it was just a fantastic surgery I, uh, rotation. I loved it. So the reason on Friday, like I said, I usually just um, saw patients in between. And then of course, also followed the PA to see patients. I really like this rotation because my PA was very hands off. So he really let me do whatever I wanted. He was like, you know what? You are the provider. So you get to do, do as much as you want. So he allowed me to go and see patients. And I really learned how to use my otoscope. So in PA school, they definitely teach you how to use your otoscope. And I must say that I think the most I used my otoscope was maybe during my family medicine rotation, but I didn't use it a lot, of course, for the remainder of my rotation. So I kind of was not very good with that skill. I had trouble identifying the tympanic membrane and then identifying what was an abnormal and normal tympanic membrane. And also during my pediatrics, I used this a lot, but definitely my ENT rotation really taught me how to properly use an otoscope and then how to properly identify the tympanic membrane. What is abnormal? What is normal? What is a fixed tympanic membrane, inflamed tympanic membrane? And of course, all the other abnormalities you see in your tympanic membranes. Does the patient have like tubes inside their tympanic membranes? So I thought it was a very, very great skill for me to learn during my ENT. Rotation. So for those of you who are interested in family medicine or even like pediatrics, I really, really recommend you to do an EMT rotation because you are really going to master your examination, your physical examination using an otoscope. So I really, really recommend that. Also, they had a really fancy machine and I don't remember what it was called, but it allowed us to look inside the nasal mucosa to see if like some of the mucosa was hypertrophy to see if there was any polyps present. So that was another thing that I really, really liked. Also, we did a lot of removal of wax, earwax. And so I really liked that also. Like I said, my PA was very hands-on. So they have a special machine. Once again, I don't remember what it was called. I did this rotation like last year, but we used a machine where you can go and remove the earwax from the ear for those individuals that come in, especially like your elderly patients that come in and they're complaining that they're having like hearing loss. Of course, you want to make sure that you look inside the ear. If you see it's a lot of hearing, a lot of wax, of course, you can do your Rene Weber test. If we do that during the ENT rotation, definitely not. They had more fancy things like your tympanogram, which is a lot more um, sensitive and specific. So we would do the tympanogram and it would just measure and tell you whether it was a conductive or sensory. And usually most of these patients that came in, and they had problem hearing, especially your elderly and you saw earwax, usually it was a conductive hearing loss, so you would go in there and use this fancy machine and remove the earwax. Very, very cool, so I really like that. It's literally like a microscope that you go in and you um, use, you fix, of course, and then you have your little utensils and you go and you remove the earwax. So I really, really like that. And like I said, my provider was very hands-on. He let me allow, he allowed me to do that. He let me also do it his own ears the first day when I first started because I wasn't sure and I was very scared of course of doing it a patient so I really like that also uh, we did a lot of uh, CT scans for patients that had like sinusitis chronic sinusitis just to make sure that it's something bacterial so we would do a lot of CT scans I got really good with reading CT scans of course of the um, face and I really the head I really like that also he allowed me to see patients and it was like I was on the provider so I would go in examine the patient and if I thought that they needed a CT scan then of course we would do a CT scan if I thought that they needed surgery or I felt like surgery was a more appropriate treatment for these patients for example patients that have nasal polyps and they've been having chronically of course usually we give these patients like steroids because it decreases that size of the nasal polyps but if it's recurring then we can possibly recommend surgery for them where you go in there and just remove that tissue that hypertrophy tissue for these patients so I really like that also uh, I was able to chart patients and it was just a fantastic rotation so I really really recommend it like I said for those of you who are wanting to do pediatrics or even family rotation you are going to get really good with your 
auto scope. So yes, that was my ENT rotation. I loved it. I actually even considered possibly going into ENT after that because I really enjoyed that rotation. And my one of the things I really liked about my PA is that every single time he went and he saw his patients, he ensured that he educated them on, you know, what is the pathophysiology of just having, for example, otitis media or otitis externa or just having like fluid in your ears, etc. So he always went in there and he talked about the physiology, the normal physiology and the pathophysiology. So I really like that. Every room had a photo of the ear canal and the ear and the tympanic membrane and the sinuses. So he was able to use those visual diagrams in the rooms to explain to patients about, you know, their pathophysiology, etc. So I really like that also. We saw a lot of patients with vertigo, um, so I really like that also my, my doctor is very good with performing your Epley maneuvers, of course, right, your Dix Hall Pike maneuvers. And I think I got very good to diagnosing vertigo. For some reason, I really struggle with vertigo, you know, whether is it central or peripheral, is it is, if it is peripheral, is it vestibular neuritis, is it something like more chronic, etc. So this rotation really, really helped me be more comfortable with vertigo and then also on top of that we saw a lot of you know tonsils of course and uh, I didn't get to do any of the INDs but he did show me like how to do INDs and incision, incision of drainage of like the IND of the tonsils if needed um, also I got to do patients that suffer we would get a lot of nosebleeds so your epistaxis and I really got to learn I didn't get to do it myself but to see how he cauterize some of these blood vessels so I really like that also with this rotation so if it's something that sounds interesting to you I really really recommend it like I said if you're going into pediatrics or family medicine you will become a master with your auto school so hopefully this video was helpful for you guys as always if you guys have any questions or anything like that comment below and I will talk to you guys in the next